Yeah, you allude to the point. Why did the Roman Empire collapse? They should have kept going. How about the Akkadian Empire? You ever hear of them? Why aren't all these empires back through time just suddenly collapsed, even back to the Sumerians? When you look back in the record, look for them falling on a 400-year cycle. It'll be something with the even. 1600, 2000, 1200, 800, 400, you know, when well, you keep going back in time, you know, BC, you got 400, 800 BC, 1200 BC, and you start to see the routine. 1600 BC is when they, they put the Assyrians at the collapse. Gee, imagine that on a 400 year cycle again. Why aren't they warning us about the current 2019 to 2100 modern grand solar minimum? They're, they're trying to not mass panic everybody into creating a situation years before the real difficulties come or they're going to need the police state in place. So the convenient excuse to put the police state in place was 9-11. They needed some great excuse to do it because if they would have done it without 9-11, there would be an enormous amount of people asking questions like, hey, what's going on? No, we don't need this police state. But now after 9-11, it was just so perfect to, to put it all in place. Now you need to understand, why are there cameras everywhere? Why is everything being monitored and why is everything being so watched? Well, I just think they're trying to preemptively get ready for when they really need to control the citizens across the planet in terms of uh, food distribution, riots, etc. America lost 38% of all of its stored grain. You understand that, right? 38% of the stored grain in the United States is unusable at the moment due to the flooding. I can't believe that didn't make more of the news. You got an entire Mississippi River flooding into an inland delta all the way up to Missouri and Nebraska turning into an inland sea. And Iowa is an inland sea, slowly draining. you got hundreds of trillions of gallons of water coming down the rivers, overflowing everything, and not a peep on the news. They're just trying to stabilize grain markets and not panic. Again, it all comes back to why is there censorship? It's to avoid mass panic. <laughs> controlling a heavily armed population during the coming food shortages, economic crash, mass migrations, climate catastrophes, geological upheavals, power shortages, riots, major civil unrest and chaos. What lengths would you go to to disarm the public to ensure your own safety? Oscar goes to Ordo Ab Keo, Order Out of Chaos, otherwise known as the Hegelian Dialectic. Problem, Reaction, Solution. Why are George Soros and the CIA covertly orchestrating so many color revolutions all around the world at this time? Could it be that the controllers are orchestrating the problems to get the public's reaction, civil unrest, so they can offer their solution, the police state and surveillance grid, for your protection, of course? Why are there new laws against growing your own food? collecting rainwater or generating your own electricity off-grid? Is it so the populace must become dependent on the state? Why are there empty unmanned FEMA camps in large fields filled with thousands of stacks of coffins not being utilized currently to help the victims of all the recent natural disasters? Why are so many retired military and intelligence people moving to the Ozarks and government agencies moving to Denver? And what the fuck is up with Denver Airport? Do they know something we don't?
global warming, the science is settled. The experts all agree. Well, not all of them. We've all seen the IPCC hockey stick graph that won Al Gore a Nobel Peace Prize. You remember Al Gore, the guy who said sea levels would rise drastically in the next 10 years? Then he bought a $9 million mansion on the Montecito beachfront. But is it really settled? As you can see by the following research, sunspot activity and temperature studies of ice core samples, tree rings, algae, etc., all confirm the same thing our historical records and the comet records speak about. The Earth goes into what is called a grand solar minimum period of extreme cooling and climate change roughly every 200 years and a much larger period of cooling and drastic climate change every 400 years. This is why all empires rise and fall on 400 year cycles. As you can see, it is the exact opposite of what the government scientists are telling us. Global warming is a hoax. Climate change is real and it is coming, but it's nothing to do with cow farts and CO2. and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. We could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. In actual fact, Vostok ice core samples from the last 800,000 years show a near exact correlation between CO2 levels and temperature, and that both were often higher than today's current levels way before we ever got here. Either the Miocene apes were driving gas-guzzling SUVs back then, or it's just a completely natural cycle. Notice the projected CO2 levels are magically drawn in, skyrocketing off the chart, whilst temperature is actually in decline. I'll let you do the math. CO2 is not dangerous, it's essential. Plants synthesize CO2 into oxygen. No CO2, no life. So if CO2 isn't dangerous, why does Bill Gates want you dead? For the same reason the elites call us useless eaters. Food. Control. Since these cycles repeat themselves, to understand what is coming, we must understand what has happened in the past cycles. Let thy food be thy medicine. Our entire immune system and biochemistry is dependent upon the vitamins and minerals we get from our food. As we've already discussed in part two, these grand solar minimum periods are always accompanied by major volcanic eruptions immediately followed by famines, plagues, and death. When we look back even further to the infamous Black Death of 1347 to 1351, which killed over 200 million people worldwide, 
we see that it fell exactly again at the lowest point of the Wolf Grand Solar Minimum. Though never proven, it was blamed on rats carrying diseases. But something else was left out of our history books. A great many people throughout Europe and other plague-stricken regions of the world were reporting that outbreaks of the plague were caused by foul-smelling mists. Those mists frequently appeared after unusual bright lights in the sky. The historian quickly discovers that the mists and bright lights were reported far more frequently and in many more locations than were rodent infestations. We know that volcanic ash thrown high into the atmosphere is dispersed via the jet streams that blanket the world. Could this strange foul-smelling mist that coincided with the Black Death be sulfur dioxide fallout from major volcanic eruptions during the plague? Boccaccio ascribed the pestilence of the Black Plague to the state of the air, not rats. The English scholar Webster conjectured that during the eruption of volcanoes, subterranean fires emit a disease-causing poison through various parts of the earth. Perhaps the real cause of the Black Death was weakened immune systems from sulfur dioxide poisoning mixed with the lack of abundant growable food nutrients during the Wolf Minimum. So what about now? We've only just now entered the modern Grand Solar Minimum. We can already see major worldwide crop failures caused by extreme cold and drought, coupled with an uptick in volcanic activity, wildfires, floods, and earthquakes. History shows us that all empires have fallen during these Grand Solar Minimums. What is to become of ours? food shortages, rationing, silver, civil unrest, international conflict. All we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is go back and look at history. That's all we have to do to understand what's going to happen in the future. This cold era has begun. All we have to do is go back and look at what happened before. What did happen before? We lost crops on a global scale. People starved and froze to death on a global scale. And that was when they were more resilient. Or reliable. We now have almost 50 million people on food stamps totally dependent on the government for food. What's going to happen with those 50 million people when we run out of food? What's going to happen with everyone in this room when you go to the Publix and there's no bread on the shelf? Because it was either looted the night before or bought out the night before. What happens in these events? One of the first things that happens when everyone recognizes the crops just got wiped out by a cold front in the spring or before harvest, what happens? Panic. 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 It, their panic will come because the President of the United States is telling us we only have global warming. We don't need to be worried or prepare for global coolant. Therefore, everyone will be totally unprepared unless you hear and believe and convey this message to your friends and family, which I recommend you do strongly. Panic will be the first step. Have the mainstream media and government informed you of any of this? Does arguing with others over politics, religion, race, sexuality, or even the shape of the earth prepare you for this? 
Can you fend for yourself and family if the power grid goes down and the supermarket shelves are empty? Does Agenda 2130 and depopulation agendas make sense to you now? Do you now understand why government think tanks and NGOs have been planning 50 to 100 years into the future, long after they'll personally be either retired or dead? Do you now understand why infrastructures are left crumbling and governments only pretend to care about the environment? Is this why a handful of people have been controlling society and centralizing power through globalist think tanks since the 1800s? Why are our history books and timelines so vague and void of everything we've covered in this film? Isn't it time we put aside our differences and come together to thrive in rather than survive the grand solar minimum? Is there a larger great cycle over many thousands of years that is even more destructive than a grand solar minimum? Oh, you bet your ass there is. And here you thought we forgot. In part 6b, the coming of the Son of Man.